Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we are going to be doing this Distress Geode Sports Tumbler. This will be perfect for any of those sports moms out there or customers who would love a sports tumbler. So let's get to it. Using a 30 ounce modern curve today, I'm just gonna take it out, make sure the lid works, then I'm gonna prep it and I'm going to prime it white. While that dries, I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and I'm gonna put it into my fancy little coaster dish here. And I'm just using a plain little bristle brush. You can use whatever you have on hand. I'm gonna use a white. Um, I'm also gonna be using a brown for the football. And I'll be using a burnt orange for the basketball. And finally, I have a yellow for the softball. You can obviously put any type of sports balls on there that you'd like. I'm using these ones today because this is what my niece and nephews are into and this tumbler is for my sister-in-law. My tumbler is ready and I'm just gonna place it onto my wand. I have all my supplies out and we are ready to put on the glue. I'm just going to freehand uh, <laughs> where I want the balls to go. But if you don't feel comfortable with freehanding it, you could tape it off, because I'm just doing it into four quadrants. So the softball will go on one side, the football on one side, and so on and so forth. So if you don't feel comfortable just kind of freehanding it, then tape it off, it, it's, it's okay. But just keep in mind that when we go to spray paint the geode, it's all gonna get covered up anyways, pretty much. And then you can just show what you'd wanna show anyways. So. I mean, it doesn't really have to be perfect, so that's why I'm just freehanding it. Now that I have my first little quadrant all uh, glued up, I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm gonna shake that on. Now, Mod Podge dries really quick. If there's any spots that are open, don't worry. We're gonna do a little second round of the glitter so that way all those areas will get filled in. I'm just gonna take my brush and sweep away any of that extra glitter that might be on the tumbler because we don't want that mixed in with the rest of the colors. Because I'm doing a softball and a baseball, I didn't want them to be right next to each other. So I'm going to actually do the football colors next, which will be right next to the softball colors. And then up top, I'll switch it up where I put the basketball over top where the softball is. And then the uh, baseball colors will go on the opposite side of that. I, I just didn't want them too close to each other since they look so similar. I'm just gonna finish getting that all glued up. I'm gonna kind of fast forward here, and then we will be ready to apply the football colors on. I'm just using a chestnut brown. The All these colors that I got, I just got from Michaels. I mean, you can use any colors you have on hand, you know, if you have your fancy colors you wanna use, but, or, you know, if, if you don't have it on hand, you just need to make a quick trip to Michaels, just get the brown, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> Now after I'm done shaking all this off, I'm just gonna come through and do the same thing where I sweep all that extra glitter off. Now you see my lines aren't perfect and that, that'll be fine because no one's gonna know that, right? Because of the geode. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply those top colors real quick. And then once that is done, I'm gonna come through and sweep off any extra glitter. Now this needs to be completely dry. You don't wanna do this until it's completely dry. I'm gonna knock off all that extra glitter. I'm gonna take my clear coat and I'm going to clear coat it. I mean, top and bottom. You want this thing to be really clear coated. So that way when we go to do this part, none of those other colors run together. Now that that nice thick coat of uh, clear coat that we sprayed on is fully dry, I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm actually going to load it up a little bit thicker this round. And I'm gonna start the same way where I do my yellow first, then my brown and so on and so forth. And we are going to just give that another coat of glitter. As we are loading this Mod Podge up so thick this round, you're gonna to wanna to let this sit for at least an hour or two before you uh, go to give it another coat of clear coat and then epoxy. Because if you don't let it dry, then it just, it'll still be wet under the epoxy and you don't want that. So you wanna make sure you let it fully dry. If you're impatient, you can use your blow dryer. It's okay. <laughs> if you're patient, but I just kind of let mine sit because I had other stuff to do. But please feel free to use a blow dryer to hurry the process along if you need to. 
Like I said earlier, this uh, tumbler is for my sister-in-law. She actually came to me and wanted just kind of a basic tumbler, but I was like, you know what? No, I'm gonna make something way cooler than that. <laughs> so I hope she uh, enjoys her new tumbler that I'm making for her. I'm going to get my yellow put on here where, the, where I just laid the glue. Now I know this isn't neon yellow. I know, I know what softballs look like. I'm not the biggest sports person, but I, I just, I like this yellow. So I, I think it still went really well with the color scheme that I was going with. <laughs> so again, I am just going to finish shaking off this yellow and then I'm gonna come through and do all the rest of my colors in the same fashion. Here's my brown, I'm just gonna do that real quick. Now when you go to finish glittering the rest, obviously some of that glitter is going to kind of seep over onto the other side. Don't worry, don't mess with it now because if you mess with it now, it'll swipe all that glitter off because the glue isn't dry yet. So wait till it's completely dry and then we will come through with our brush and we will sweep anything away that got into the other side. After I let that fully dry for an hour or two, or if you used your blow dryer and let it dry that way, <laughs> we're gonna move outside and we're gonna do the same process again. Really load up that clear coat, because if you don't, that glitter will run into the other side. So make sure you load that clear coat on, and then we'll be ready to put our coat of our first coat of epoxy on. I have my uh, A and B all mixed up. I use Illumilite's amazing clear cast. And I'm just gonna do a swipe on the front, a swipe on the back. I'm gonna stick it on my turner. I'm gonna let that cure overnight. You want this nice and cured for when you go to apply the vinyls. While that was curing, I went ahead and I went and found all the uh, patterns that I'm gonna need for my basketball, football, and baseball and softball. I just did a simple Google search and then I came up with some shops on Etsy that actually sold these SVGs, so then I bought those and I transferred them over to my Cricut. And I'm just going to keep in mind that the baseball on top is gonna to be larger than the softball on the bottom, so I'm just going to make sure that that's a little bit bigger. I think I did about four inches uh, for the patterns on the top, and then I did about, probably about three inches for the patterns on the bottom. So again, it doesn't, it's not going to fully wrap around it, but we're going to be doing that geode, so it's going to cover up anything that didn't really get covered. So I'm just going to get those all duplicated, and then I'm going to get it all cut out on my machine. Now, I like to make sure that everything is uh, going to be ready for, to be cut. And then I make everything black so that way it's not gonna put it on a separate mat because if you have it a different color, for some reason it wants to put it on a separate mat. So I turn everything black and then I just make sure to place my vinyls in the proper areas that it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate everything. I'm gonna have my red over here, my black up top for the basketball and then the white for the football at the bottom. Now that my tumbler is nice and cured, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna trim up the top and I'm gonna go ahead and sand it too because since we're not painting yet, I'm gonna give it a nice little sanding and then we'll be ready to apply our vinyls. I'm gonna do the basketball shape first. To make sure that it's gonna fit around the tumbler, I'm just gonna make these slits, which will help out a lot when we go to uh, place it onto that curve of the tumbler. So I'm just going to adjust that and then I'm gonna lay it down. Now some of it's going to drape over obviously uh, off the top of the tumbler and even down into those other colors, but that's okay because we're going to take a knife and we're just gonna trim up all those extra pieces. See all those cuts we made are very helpful because I can come through and make sure everything is nice and straight around that curve. to take my exacto knife and just run a line right through the center there so that way nothing kind of laps over into the other areas. I'm just gonna come through and do the same thing with the top, just trim up the top 
and the basketball portion is done. I'm gonna come through and do the baseball. I decided I wanted it up and down or uh, vertical. And then I'm gonna do the softball horizontal so that way, you know, they, they don't look too similar. So I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna make some slits uh, in the center. So that way, again, it'll help with curving around the uh, curvature of the tumbler. I'm gonna pull this off all haphazardly. <laughs> And once I manage to uh, get this vinyl off, then we'll be ready to apply it to our tumbler. <laughs> okay, there we go, now I'm ready. So now I'm just gonna line it up, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna kinda line it up, and then we're gonna come through and trim up all that excess. Now that I have that all trimmed, I like to take the heat of my hand and I just kind of press down onto the vinyl just to help uh, so that way it kind of seals it down. I, I feel like the heat kind of helps make it form a little bit better. So here I am just going to do the football, which is really simple. Again, just line it up, figure out which way you want it, put it down, football is good to go. We didn't need to do any trimming with that one. <laughs> and then we'll be ready to move on to the last part, which is the softball. Now because uh, the baseball was uh, vertical, I'm gonna do this horizontal. I'm just gonna make those slits just like I did for the baseball and I'm gonna apply that really quick. And this won't need any trimming either. So it's just as simple as peeling it and sticking it down. After I get this all put down, it will be ready for its next coat of epoxy. Now this next coat of epoxy, I'm going to apply just a little bit thicker because we're going to be doing that uh, geode after this. So, and you can't sand, so you wanna make sure that your next coat's a little bit thicker so that way there's not too many lumps or bumps in uh, your epoxy. Now that I have that transfer tape all peeled off, it is ready for the epoxy. I'm just gonna do a stripe along the front, stripe along the back, rub it in really well, put it on my turner for at least 24 hours. You wanna make sure it's nice and cured before we apply the spray paint. So after that is fully cured, here it is outside, all nice and shiny, ready to go. I'm gonna be using a white. Here's the white I'll be using. And then I'll also be using a flat black, which I, it doesn't really matter because it's gonna look glossy under the epoxy anyways. So whatever black you have on hand. Now when I go to do the black, as you can see, I'm leaving some of it exposed. That's so that way it makes it easier when we go to do the geode portion. I'm gonna let that dry for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna do my white the same way, just right over top of that black. And as you can see there, I still left some of that exposed so that way it makes it a little bit easier on myself. I'm gonna let that dry for about 30 minutes to an hour. Now that that's nice and dry, here it is inside. As you can see, some of those places exposed. And then I have my 100% acetone, and I also have some 91% rubbing alcohol, which will help out in the end. I'll kind of show you how that kind of removes any black paint that gets smudged around when we go to uh, remove some of this paint. Now I'm just using an old receiving blanket, which is just flannel material, which works really well to wipe away those areas. So first I'm just gonna take my 100% acetone and I'm just gonna kind of wipe down those exposed areas first and kind of go from there. Now, as I'm wiping everything away, I like to keep in mind where the personalization is going to go. I know this is a 30 ounce, and typically on a 30 ounce, I do about a three and a half inch wide um, personalization across. So I, I wanna try to keep at least that big of a gap on what will be the front of my tumbler. I think the hardest part with doing geodes is where where do you wipe off? <laughs> That's why I left kind of the sides exposed because I knew 
I wanted, you know, some of those areas exposed. So I, I went ahead and that's why I left the gap, which helped me out a little bit more as to exactly where I wanted to start. I'm just going to finish up just randomly doing these splotches all over the tumbler, making sure that most of those uh, sports balls are exposed in the process. did each side, I could kind of see where else I wanted to expose a little bit more. So I just went uh, on the bottom a little bit and then I also went off to the side of each uh, one of those sports balls and just exposed just a little bit more to it. Now that I have my geode all done, I'm just going to kind of slow it down and show you guys. I just want to take my acetone and just come through and wipe up any more of that paint residue that might be on the exposed areas that I don't want it because if you go to put your epoxy over it will make it look all foggy and you don't want that so I'm just gonna come through and kind of tidy that up real quick and then we are going to come through and take our rubbing alcohol and clean up those black areas around the geode parts where the, the black all smudged again I always say it there's no right or wrong when making art you guys are doing a fantastic job I know this might have looked like something you didn't think you could do, but I really think you guys could do this. I have, I have uh, faith in you guys. <laughs> I know you can do it. Now that that's all cleaned up, I'm gonna come through with my 91% rubbing alcohol. Now if you can't find rubbing alcohol, make sure you check your local drugstores because that's where I find mine half the time. People tend to forget about those places. So make sure you check those places out if you can't seem to find it anywhere else. So I'm just going to take that rubbing alcohol and a clean cloth. I don't want to use the same cloth that I use to wipe all my paint off with. And I'm going to just tidy up all those black smudges from around uh, my geode. So if you've wondered how you see other people's geodes and they look so crisp and clean, this is how. Just rubbing alcohol. It just cleans it right up. <laughs> Now that that's all cleaned up, I'm going to come through and I'm going to apply the decals that my sister-in-law requested. Now you don't have to pick these decals, obviously, it can be whatever you want, but I'm just kind of showing you guys what, what she picked. Now yes, I am applying it straight to the paint. Typically I don't do this. Typically I will uh, epoxy and then put the decals on, but when I'm doing a geode, I kind of want to put the decals on and then I decide from there if I want to rub anything else away or expose any more details. But I actually didn't do that this time. I kind of liked it the way it was, so I, I didn't uh, remove anything else. But you just want to make sure that your paint won't peel away when you go to remove your transfer tape. And I felt pretty confident that uh, my paint wouldn't do that, so that's why I went ahead and did it this way. Again, I'm just going to take the heat of my hand and make sure that those vinyls are stuck down. And then we are ready to move on to epoxy. Now, I added just a little bit of extra glitter into my epoxy this time around. Just kind of give it a little bit more shine. You don't have to do that, or you can do it. I mean, it's totally up to you. There's, Like I said, there's no right or wrong. <laughs> but this is for my sister-in-law, and I figured she would like that little bit of extra sparkle. So I added this into it. So now I'm just going to do a stripe on the front, stripe on the back, and let it cure. And she is ready to be shipped off. Take this and try to duplicate it, or take it and make it something completely your own. I hope that this inspired you guys today to keep stepping outside of that comfort zone and pushing yourself to do more things that you would never do. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more tutorials, vlogs, tips, products that I have coming your way. And I will see you guys next time.